What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to this transfer roundup here on Anfield Agenda. I'm going to be taking you through the latest stories around Liverpool Football Club and the transfer window, not just January, but obviously with a view to the summer as well. We are going to be discussing Haidara. We're going to be discussing, of course, a little bit around Jude Bellingham. We're going to be looking at Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo, and a couple of other bits and pieces as well. As always, you know the drill. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. Do drop a like on the video and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so as you can see we have amazingly hit 160,000 subscribers we wouldn't have done it without your support so thank you again from all of us here at Anfield Agenda for that but look let's get stuck in for it because there's a lot to get through so the Independent have run with a story to credit Liverpool's interest in Orby Leipzig midfielder uh, Amadou Hadara but as I'm sure you're aware the club most likely to try and make a move for Hadara is of course Brighton uh, is that because of a potential sale for Moses Caicedo? Well, you and I and a lot of people hope that that's the case. But it has been reported by Fabrizio Romano that Brighton are under no intention or have no intention to sell Moses Caicedo in this window unless a very, very, very substantial offer is put their way. We had seen reports of around 55 million turned down uh, from Chelsea to Brighton for the services of Moses Caicedo and it seems like they want a lot more money if they are to take the Ecuadorian in or to sell the Ecuadorian international um, and I don't know if we're going to be in that conversation. Look, we are definitely a fan of Caicedo. Klopp is definitely interested in Caicedo. There's enough stuff out there to suggest that. But quite simply, it comes down to the old adage and the old conversation that we always have under FSG. Do we have the money and where does the money come from? And it looks like as of right now, especially in January, we don't have any money to be going out there to try and sign Moses Caicedo or anybody else. Now, if we are to look for a slight positive, and again, I'm putting a positive spin on this because it's how I want to feel about it. Benfica's manager, Roger Smith, has been speaking and he said he's very confident that not just Enzo Fernandez, but all of their starting 11 will remain with the club until the end of the season. Is that good news for Liverpool? Well, I think it is. Because look at it this way. We know Klopp's a fan of Enzo. I'm sure you're probably a fan of Enzo just as much as I am. We've seen his exploits at the World Cup at Argentina. We've seen what he's capable of. But we also knew that there was no way in this January window that FSG were going to allow Jurgen Klopp to go out there and, and spend €120 million, Euro, which is the bio clause, to sign him. So we were all sitting back anxiously awaiting to see if somebody else would pounce, if Real Madrid, if Chelsea, if Manchester City, if anybody would come in and actually put the money on the table that would trigger that clause. Thankfully, as of right now, nobody's done it and we are here now 25th of January windows closing in a week's time it's looking less and less likely that Benfica will sell him because they wouldn't have time to replace him and that's in my opinion a good thing because at least by Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool a bit of breathing space before they look to make their attack on the summer transfer window and we're all hoping maybe hoping beyond hope but we're hoping that maybe Enzo Fernandez is part of that midfield duo that we're expecting to be brought into the club now some of you watching this might want more than a duo and that's understandable I'm just talking about really top level players uh, another player who's been linked to Liverpool Football Club a lot over recent windows has been Joe Gomez of Flamenco a midfielder who looks like He's of serious interest now to Wolves and it looks like Wolves are about to make a move for him and have a decent chance of getting him according to the mail. Now, again, it doesn't take too much to start asking the questions. If Wolves go out there and they bring in Joe Gomez, does that mean that maybe Matthias Nunch could be on his way to Liverpool? Again, it's possible, right? We can make these links and we can think, but we don't know for certain. There has been more stories today that maybe Chelsea are going to throw their hat into the ring for Matthias Nunch as well, which would uh, which would be interesting. And let's be honest, we all wish Todd Bowley would just stop spending all this money. It's um, it's very frustrating, isn't it? When we have owners who are fairly tight with money and you see Todd Bowley coming in there and splashing the cash and making the big signings. Um, Sport Build have a slightly different take on the Liverpool and Jude Bellingham situation. So we heard Florian Plettenberg and myself, uh, Henry Winter and many other journalists who are probably of the mindset that Jude Bellingham will be at Liverpool. Well, Sport Build have said that it's looking increasingly difficult for Liverpool to sign Bellingham because of the sheer sums of money 
that are going to be involved in it. I read somewhere today that maybe all over for that contract, uh, you could be talking nearly 200 million, if not more, um, with regards to wages and the fee and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to make an offer to Bellingham. It look, they're calling it a historic offer here from Dortmund. And it looks like that that fee would be probably about 13 million a year based off reports but it is believed as well that Bellingham will turn that down his preference is to join Liverpool Football Club although Real Madrid are absolutely besotted with the guy um, and are trying to move heavily in earth to get him but it looks like as of right now Liverpool are still in the driving seat as long as we pony up the dough now with regards to ponying up the dough this is where we come on to FSG because I'm pretty annoyed right now because once again I've read another article that is blowing smoke up the backside of FSG and how great they are saying the total value of Liverpool's owner's empire has broken through the 10 billion dollar mark. FSG who own the Red Sox, Liverpool Football Club, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, NASCAR's RSK Racing and some other entertainment sports and real estate businesses are now valued at 10.4 billion. Problem with that is we ain't seen any of this benefit that yes their assets are growing and growing and growing and that's what a hedge fund and an investment fund wants to do but we as football fans we don't really care about john w henry's net worth we care about the performance of liverpool football club and the players on the pitch and right now he just is not doing enough to make that happen so I'm sick of reading these positive PR spin stories in FSG because all their wealth isn't worth a damn to us unless we see it on the pitch. So the only interest I have in hearing John W. Henry's name is that he's just potentially written a check to Jurgen Klopp or given the go-ahead for Jurgen Klopp to go out there and spend some money. If not, then please do sell up, John. Please just go. Please do. I know other people, other channels will be a bit more calculated in their... Um, assessment of this situation i don't give a damn about john w henry i don't care about access to liverpool football club i care about the football club performing and i care about us fans being very very frustrated by it and i don't want any world or any scenario where the excuses are already being trotted out about potentially not having the money to make this bellingham deal happen you've had long enough you've told us enough spin and lies go out there get the deal done and shut up we know he's the one that Jurgen Klopp wants it's over to FSG now to actually put up and show that they do want Liverpool Football Club to be successful that they do want Liverpool Football Club to go out there and challenge for trophies on a consistent basis we put together a great group of players Jurgen Klopp FSG do take credit for that as well of course and the recruitment team but those days are gone a lot of those players now have come to the twilight of their careers and certainly can not perform to the levels they used to do. And that's why we need investment. And that's why Liverpool Football Club need to be active in the market. So look, that's my thoughts on it all. That's a roundup of the signings that I've seen mentioned or the names I've seen mentioned are linked to the club. There's also uh, talk of Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain maybe moving to Brighton, whether that's in this window or in the summer, I think comes down to whether Liverpool would let him leave for free or not based on the articles that I've been reading. So again, I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Do you think it's a good move for Alex if he decides to link up again with Adam Lallana at Brighton? Over to you. Again, I look forward to reading your thoughts. Thank you for watching and I will catch up with you soon. Much love. Bye-bye.